amazing battery life is the one thing we all want, but very few of us actually have. And this is because having a powerful smartphone also means having to sacrifice in this department. The Motorola Droid Turbo promises everything. Amazing battery life, great looks, and stunning performance, all without compromises. But can it actually achieve it? Hello guys, this is Edgar with MobileGeeks.com. I've been using the Motorola Droid Turbo for a few weeks and I'm ready to tell you all about it. So let's jump into this review. The Motorola Droid Turbo looks a lot like other Droid devices. This means that it misses out on that sleek and amazing design that you see on, say, the Moto X or the Moto G. But this also means that you get that out of this world solid design that Droid is so famous for. I will admit that I'm not a big fan of the black version of the Motorola Droid Turbo. And this is because it's made of this thing they call black nylon, which happens to be a little softer and it, fe it just feels like it will get dirty. The red version happens to look and feel much better as it is made with a more sleek material that they call metalized glass fiber. This material makes the device look very good and it feels like it's almost about to stop a bullet as it is reminiscent of what we know as Kevlar, which is what bulletproof vests are made of. Paired with the Gorilla Glass 3 in the front, these materials feel like they will make for an amazing device that won't break or come apart on you during day-to-day -day usage. Now, nothing is perfect and I did come across a little issue that bugs me a little too much probably. The buttons on the side, which are the power and volume buttons, happen to be a little wobbly when you move them around. This is not great for build quality, but they happen to be very solid and offer a good feedback and travel. So it's not exactly a deal breaker, but just something to keep in mind. On the front of the device, you will find a 5.2 inch Quad HD display. This means that it has a resolution of 1440 times 2560. That is a very high resolution and the display clearly shows it. Text is amazingly crisp, as are video and images, of course, if they happen to be of QHD definition or higher. And because it's an AMOLED display, blacks happen to be amazingly deep and colors are very vibrant or oversaturated, as some of you would say. I happen to love the way AMOLED displays emit color in smartphones, because when I'm using a smartphone, I'm not looking to have color accuracy. What I'm looking for is a display that looks good, that pops out, and AMOLED displays do that very well. On the other hand, if you're looking for something that shows true to life colors, you won't quite find it in the Motorola Droid Turbo. If you look above the screen, you will find a two megapixel camera, which works very well, but it's nothing special. It will be good for video calls and your regular selfies. There's also a single extended speaker, which will work as your regular speaker as well as your speakerphone. I was actually pretty surprised by this speaker. It's a single speaker, but it sounds just as loud as my HTC One M8. Now, it won't sound as full as the HTC One M8, Because it is a single speaker, it won't offer you the best experience for, say, watching YouTube videos or just watching movies in general. But that is something to be expected out of many phones nowadays. Flip the device around and you will find a whopping 21 megapixel rear facing camera. Which, by the way, it's a pretty awesome camera. The dual LED flash provides ample light for working with your shots. Image quality is not up there with iPhone 6 or the Samsung Galaxy Note 4 but I would have to say I'm pretty surprised about the results I got. Images were crisp, they were always in focus, and they had very good exposure. There was some noise in dark environments, but you can expect that out of any camera, really. In terms of performance, this device is a champion. It comes with a 2.7 GHz quad-core Qualcomm Snapdragon 805 processor, which makes it as fast as any other device out there, or at least the high-end ones. And because it has 3 GB of RAM, it's actually great for multitasking. I never saw a hiccup or lag or anything like that. Where the Motorola Droid Turbo does differentiate itself is in the software. There's no bells and whistles here. And in fact, the experience seems a lot like what you would find in the Google Now Launcher or a device like the Nexus 6. It's almost pure Google. You get super simple home screens and a row of icons on the bottom, which include your most frequent shortcuts and the app drawer button. Open the app drawer and there's nothing but apps that are organized in alphabetical order. 
you just swipe from left to right to access the other ones. If you pull down your notification bar, you also get something very simple. So what exactly is unique about the Motorola Droid Turbo? Well, this is no average stock Android device and it is not a Nexus device for sure. You can find some pretty nifty and unique features. They just happen to be less and much more useful in my opinion. My favorite happens to be touchless controls. And that is that cool little feature that you've seen in devices like the Moto X in which you can just talk to your phone without even touching it. You can easily say something like, okay, Google now, and the phone will activate itself and start listening to you. And by the way, you can actually switch this phrase to whatever you want, whether it's hit me baby one more time or show me the magic. After the hot word feature is activated, you can say something like what's up and the phone will tell you the time and read out loud any notifications, messages or whatever you may have waiting for you. You can also ask questions like what time is it or how tall is Barack Obama or you can even set your alarms to wake up every morning. If the system doesn't recognize a phrase, it just sends it over to Google Now. So anything Google Now can do can be used as a request. By the way, the WhatsApp command didn't actually work very well for me. It worked about half the time. I don't know if it's my voice or something, but when this command was transferred to Google Now, it actually did read what's up. So I don't know what the problem is, but I thought I would let you know about it. Another great feature is Motorola Assist, which actually allows you to have some sort of smart experience when it comes to your settings. For example, you can set your phone to go on silent at a certain time or maybe during meetings. You can also make it so that your phone actually reads everything out loud to you while you're driving. If those features weren't enough, you can also use Moto Actions, which is pretty much your gesture control base. Um, a very popular feature from Moto Actions is having the ability to twist your wrist twice and the camera app will be launched. And see, this is what I love about Motorola. These are all great features that will literally change the way you experience your smartphone. Manufacturers like Samsung make a bunch of features and they put them in your notification bar, they put them in your buttons, they put them everywhere. Motorola goes for a much simpler, yet very featureful experience. Let's finally talk about what you've all been waiting for, battery life. To summarize, this phone is actually pretty amazing with battery life. I was getting about, say, 18 hours with average to heavy usage. Meanwhile, if I used my device lightly, I would get up to a day and 20 hours of battery life. That is simply insane. But is it something out of this world that only that massive 3,900 milliamp hour battery would be able to accomplish? I don't think so. And this is because other phones actually get really close to what the Motorola Droid Turbo offers. And those devices do it with a, say, 3000 milliamp hour battery. Now, we do have to keep in mind that this phone is very powerful and it comes with a QHD display, which is a resource hawk pretty much. Given the circumstances, I will have to say that this phone actually performs amazingly well in battery life. The only comparable device out there with such a high definition screen and all this power would probably be the Galaxy Note 4. And the Motorola Droid Turbo does happen to last more than the Samsung Galaxy Note 4. Now, considering everything about the Motorola Droid Turbo, would I recommend it to you? It's an amazing phone. It comes with great battery life, a stunning display, and specs to throw around, really. It goes for $600 off contract or $200 on contract from Verizon, of course. And the real question is whether you would be willing to let go of other amazing devices from other manufacturers and go with this one. And of course, it all depends on what you prefer. If you really value battery life and you really want that amazing display, this phone is a stunning contender. It really does have everything you could want in a phone. And Motorola did very well at keeping its promise of an amazing experience without compromises. But there are some factors that you may want to consider. Maybe you want a phone that is bigger, like the Samsung Galaxy Note 4, or sleeker like the iPhone 6, or with a metallic design like the HTC One M8. If those are your priorities, then you may not miss the few hours of extra battery life that you will get. And that will be it for today, guys. Once again, this is Edgar with MobileGeeks.com. Please remember that if you like what we're doing here, hit the like button or subscribe so you can keep getting these videos. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good day.